In this video, we're going to be repairing an HP 3585A spectrum analyzer. And here you go. This is the front panel to it. The reason why I have it in pretty much pieces right now is because one of the issues I found with it as I was already repairing it, because I did was able to get it to function and all that, was this. And you can see all that nastiness there. A lot of corrosion. So I am going to have to clean this up. But thankfully, no water's actually gotten to the tinnerator or other board. They're actually all clean. I went ahead and took the cover off this. No water made it in there. No water even made it to the back. For some reason, only just hit this front section only on the bottom. So it could have been the way they laid it down. They might have laid it down in the puddle of water or the way they covered it or whatever. But thankfully, it didn't affect any of the switches or anything like that or anything inside. And... The spectrum analyzer actually works perfectly and it's dead within spec. But I'm gonna go and finish the rest of the repairs to it. Because one of the other problems I noticed was with this rotation pod here. And every time I would turn it, it would make an arcing sound. I found that the bottom part of it came out and this slid out. So I was able to actually slide it in. I actually plastic welded it. And then I went ahead and sanded it nice and smooth so it gave it a professional job so it doesn't look like it was broken. And I'll hold up, but if I can find another pot, I'll probably just put a new one in there. But for now, I did that and it works, so that's good enough. I'm going to go and clean up the front section of it and then get it somewhat back together. And I'll show you the inside of this thing. So I went ahead and cleaned all the corrosion that I cut off of this here and on the bottom side and also did this panel here too. So now at least there's no corrosion in there. Down the road I may go ahead and strip all the paint off of this and do it properly. But for now my main concern was just getting rid of the corrosion that was on that bottom side. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this and then I'll go and show you the top part and show you it functioning. So next step, which is one of the annoying things that bother me, is when you look at the display, you can see scratches on it. So I moved the display cover. This is a piece of plexiglass. I'm going to go and polish this up pretty much. What I'll do is I'll do coarse sandpaper to actually very fine sandpaper. Sometimes I'll even go to glass paper. And I'll get that thing looking like brand new. And then afterwards, if there's any fine scratches and stuff, I'll remove it with the polish. Now I am doing that because it is kind of annoying when you go and see stuff like that. And you don't necessarily need to buy another one. You can clean that right up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and already removed most of the deep scratches except for one little one I left there just to show you. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish off probably a couple more passes. I'll have that scratch completely removed and then... I'll go ahead and bring this up to a finer grit and then I'll go ahead and polish it and it'll look like brand new after I get done. I'll probably have to do the other side too. The other side's not as bad though but this side here is pretty bad. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that part. So I went ahead and um, almost finished polishing up this glass and pretty much got rid of all the deep scratches and everything still got to do a couple more passes to get rid of some of the finer scratches but it's pretty much almost done so I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up and then I'll put it back on the display so I went ahead and installed the safety glass back over the CRT and you can see it looks much much cleaner now no more deep scratches and stuff like that so now I'm going to go ahead and clean up the front panel and stuff like that and I'll get back to you once I'm done. For those that are curious to see how these switches work, as you can see right there there's a spring and when you push on it you can see how this just pushes this back up. The contacts themselves are actually in here. I can't take these apart because they're plastic welded. So I can't actually show you how the inner of one of these switches work, but you can kind of see just how it pushes it out and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out how to clean this to get this to um, work smoother and stuff like that. And I'm going to go and put this back in. So I went ahead and finished installing the front panel. I went ahead and cleaned all the switches. And I also cleaned the front panel while I was at it since I had the switches out. And... So much more easier to push the buttons now. They don't make that loud clicking sound like they did before. Even though they will have some noise because the style of switches that are in here. But nowhere near as bad. 
One thing though is I hate is when people put razor blades to try to clean the stickers off. You don't need to use a razor blade to clean the sticker off. There's other ways where you can either heat it to um, kind of soften the adhesive and just rub it off. Or you can use like you know gook off and stuff to get some of the chemical off. But please don't use a razor blade because this is what happens to the finish. So I'm going to go and power it on because I did repair the power supply like I told you earlier. So the unit does actually work. I did that because I want to make sure the unit works before actually going through the um, restoration process of getting all the buttons and stuff and time consuming stuff on. I want to make sure that the uh, spectrum analyzer actually was working. And then there you go. And the other thing too is I fixed the rotation because this was broken before. And now the pod's nice and smooth and rotation actually works where before because the pod was actually broken in the back well what happened was you would hear weird arcing like almost sounded like an arcing sound and of course due to the switch when doing because it, it was halfway in and out but now it is working so i'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of it cleaned up and then I'll show you the top part of it, and you'll see why this piece of equipment was over $25,000 back when it was first introduced. It was a very expensive piece of test equipment back in the day. Here's the internal top view of the HP Spectrum Analyzer 3585A. And you kind of see why this thing cost $23,700 back in the day. It's just way overbuilt. But it's also what gives it its high performance because the shielding on this thing is pretty thick. And it gives it just excellent noise floor. I mean, and everything. I mean, this thing performs very good. But what I had to do to repair this thing was I had to replace the transistor on this board here. And I also had to actually. Um, do the cold side joints on this one clean all the contacts and everything to get this thing going because it wasn't sending power to actually power the processing boards and everything else so once I fixed that it came to life and it works perfectly fine like a hundred percent there ain't nothing wrong with this thing now but it's just impressive looking at it. there's a lot of gold in this I mean everything's pretty much gold plated it's very easily serviceable and even do this thing was probably beat. I mean, it got dents there, dents there, and stuff. It w works perfectly fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this thing besides the repairs I had to do to the power supply to get it going. But overall, you can see the quality of this thing, and the quality is just impressive. I mean, everything's labeled, everything's easy to find. I mean, it's very easy to service. I mean, gets diagnostic lights, the whole nine yards, test points everywhere. I mean, this thing is just impressive, pretty much. But I figure I'll go ahead and give you a top view so you guys can see what's in a piece of gear that was $23,700 back in the day. I figure I'll go ahead and demonstrate that this machine now does actually work. And also on how silent the button should be after servicing, because I went ahead and rebuilt the whole front panel and lubricated all the switches. And now they're smooth and they don't click as loud as they were. They shouldn't be very loud and clicky and sticky. And that's just due to spring. The lubrication under it dries up and that's what causes the switches to stick and it to be very loud when you push the button. So let me go and insert a start frequency of 22 megahertz because I am feeding a 25 megahertz signal into it. Okay, and then the stop frequency, I'll just put 28 megahertz. And then there you go. And you can see it's saying it's a 4.6 dBm signal. I'm feeding a 5.0 dBm signal. But that's to be expected because you're going to have cable loss and stuff. But I mean this thing works flawlessly pretty much. And I already went ahead and used it actually for a distortion test on it. And it's wonderful. I mean the noise floor on this thing is phenomenal. It is a high performing unit. And I do recommend if you can get one cheap that's serviceable to buy one. I mean, they're great for doing audio amplifier work or for doing HF, CB, I mean, even lower VHF work and stuff like that. It's just a great analyzer to have around. The only thing is it is huge. It is a boat anchor and it does take up a lot of room. 
so you definitely will need a separate table or bench for it to actually be able to pretty much put this thing on because it'll take up your whole entire bench this thing is huge and it is a hundred pounds but as you can see the generator is I mean the signal analyzer not generators back alive and it is fully operational I used it already for a couple hours and it works flawlessly I'm quite impressed with its specs and what I see on the screen when I was testing for harmonics and stuff like that I mean this thing did wonderful so You'll probably be seeing more of this Spectrum Analyzer in upcoming videos because I do do restoration on amplifiers and stuff like that and do upgrades and stuff. So I'll be using this guy.